In this video, I will be covering the calculation of the optimal conversion point for convertible preferred shares. Then we will look at a few scenarios where the preferred shareholders will have to make a decision on whether to opt for the liquidation preference value or would they actually convert their preferred shares into common shares. In this scenario, we have a startup that issues $50 million of convertible preferred shares at $100 per share, and there are 500,000 preferred shares outstanding. Assume liquidation preference of 2.5 times and a conversion ratio of 1.5 times at exit in five years. The startup has 2 million shares outstanding. So first, we calculate the optimal conversion point. The optimal conversion point is equals to the total liquidation preference value divided by the conversion ratio times the number of preferred shares. To get the total liquidation preference value, we will take the liquidation preference multiple, which is 2.5 times, then we will multiply by the value of the preferred shares at issuance, which is $50 million, then we will divide by the number of common shares upon conversion, which is 1.5 times 500,000. So in this case, what it's telling us is that if the preferred shareholders, if they opt for the liquidation preference value in five years time, they will receive $125 million of cash. Okay, But if they choose to convert their preferred shares into common shares, that would be 750,000 common shares. And this gives us a conversion point of $166.67. And what this tells us is that if the equity value at exit is greater than this optimal conversion point, then the optimal decision is for the preferred shareholder to convert their preferred shares into common shares. Next, what if you are asked to calculate the conversion value? To do that, we will need the optimal conversion point, which we computed previously, and then we'll multiply by the number of shares post-conversion. So for the optimal conversion point, that's $166.67. And for the number of shares post-conversion, we will take 2 million shares outstanding. Then we will plus the 750,000 uh, common shares after converting the preferred shares to common shares. So that will be equals to $458.3 million. We would compare the equity value at exit to the conversion value to determine if it is optimal to convert the preferred shares to common shares. Now let's look at a scenario where the equity value at exit is $80 million. Determine the optimal decision for preferred shareholders. Calculate the preferred shareholders payoff per preferred share. The liquidation preference value is $125 million. And in this case, the equity value at exit is less than the liquidation preference value. It's impossible for the preferred shareholders to ask for $125 million because the equity value is just lower. In this case, the preferred shareholders will receive only $80 million and that's equivalent to $160 per preferred share. Okay, that's the amount that they receive $80 million divided by 500,000 shares. In this next scenario, if the equity value at exit is $140 million, then how would that affect the preferred shareholder's decision? Now we'll note that the equity value at exit is greater than the liquidation preference value, but is lower than the conversion value. So the optimal decision is to receive the liquidation preference value, which is $125 million, and that is equivalent to $250 per preferred share. Okay, so they will only receive 125 million divided by 500,000 preferred shares. Now in the final scenario, if the equity value at exit is $500 million, then what would the preferred shareholders optimal decision be at this point? So the equity value at exit is greater than the conversion value of 458.3 million. So the optimal decision is for the preferred shareholders to convert the 500,000 preferred shares to 750,000 common shares. And the preferred shareholders payoff in this case would be their portion of a portion of these 500 million. So we will take the 500 million and we will divide by the total number of common shares post conversion, which is 2,750,000 shares, of which 750,000 shares would go to the 
preferred shareholders, okay, who, who have converted their preferred shares to common shares. And that's equals to $136.36 million. Okay, that's the value of the common shares that the preferred shareholders have converted to. Now, if you want to measure the payoff per preferred share, which is based on the 500,000 shares, then we'll just take the payoff, $136.36 million, we divide it by 500,000 shares, and that gives us a payoff of $272.73 per preferred share. Now, another way to look at it is if I were to take 500 million, divide by 2.75 million shares, I would get 500 million divided by 2.75 million. So the share price, okay, the share price after dilution is 181.82. And based on the multiplier of 1.5 times, if I multiply by 1.5, I will get 272.73. Okay, which is the same as what I've computed here.